when you put a seed into the ground, the first thing that happens, you know what happens? 98% of the seed rots. And then you get roots, shoots, and fruits. But the rotting process is what preserved the seed until it got to the ground. Right. So now, but as I said, the next step you got to do, you have to water the plant to make sure, because if not, it's going gonna, it's gonna to die. The next thing you have to do is to watch out for weeds. I mean, smoking them yeah. and, and, so, and some of our best friends. Can it give you some insight, though? Uh, not something that you can, that you can retain. It erases the memory bank. It interferes with the soul's personal experience. It gives you coming attraction, but it doesn't allow you to live in the moment. Right, interesting it, way of putting it it. It, it. it glorifies what is already beyond glorification, and the glorification is no one near the reality. It's synthetic. Right. So the, the labor a person makes to reach the heights, the process gives them access, makes the vessel to contain the light. And grass is not on one of the things that helps you do that. Right. Or acid, or ecstasy. Those are all quick fixes for people. You know your stuff. Yeah, I know. I've been there. <laughs> You did. You I used spent. To, uh, you used to smoke pot. More than that. You did acid. Fifteen years. Fifteen hundred trips. Fifteen hundred trips. No and I'm way. I'm still here. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Because my friend used to manufacture it. So I got it for free. So I mean, I've probably done five. No, so, and no. mushrooms. I don't, I'll say what. I'm glad I survived. Where were you living in I, California? I, no, I was living in, uh, in uh, that time in, the, in West Village. And then, in, in the 60s? then Tangier. With, uh, with uh, Alan Ginsberg and Gregory Corso, Jack Kerouac. Wow, what Beth a story. Clark. We used to hang out in West Village, you know, that was the time, the 60s. Right. Alfred, uh, Richard Alfred and, and Leary, yeah. those, those were my buddies. Wow. I survived. How did you I lived survive? In Ibiza, oh. I lived in Ibiza, in right. and in Amsterdam. Right. You know, we got by. You did the whole thing. Bartering. I got you. Right? Yeah. And, and, I know that life. And I have friends who um, I say college for. Who are not walked out of windows. Yeah. Walked into cars, yeah, and are in jail in Morocco. Still, still, thirty years later, Ugh. they got caught with stuff. And with some hash. So I look at my condition as as waking up from a coma. I knew everything was going on, but I couldn't get involved. And all of a sudden, my life is a life, and it's something that doesn't need to have any kind of perks, any kind of additional ingredients or MSG right. to induce, can, can make the flavor more. There's enough flavor in the carrot without MSG. Right. At the age of 33, not 50. Right. I went to Crown Heights, I went to a Lac Boma parade, yeah. and I put on film for the first time in 18 years. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, within three months, I had a non-kosher restaurant, macrobiotic restaurant called The Fulgrim. Within three months, the place became kosher. I became kosher. I started studying every day, praying every day, and now, basically, I didn't become religious. I stopped being who I'm not. I didn't come down, I kept going up. And I didn't have to, you know, inject myself and snort and, and smoke to get there. Right. It was all there already. Right.